today on the Hope for Today broadcast. I'm your host, Doran Wengard, founder of Wengard Ministries. I'm so grateful that you have uh, taken the time, and it's really my joy that, that I can be part of your life in this way. And really this has to do with, with the original calling that God gave me uh, when he called me to preach, and that is to give people hope. He actually it was a specific calling, and he said, I want you to tell people, get your hope up. And he said, get, get your hope up and watch what I will do. And so really, this is all about the, the kingdom of God coming to you, the kingdom of God coming to bear on your life and, and the, um, the results of what Jesus did on the cross um, actually manifesting in your life as well. So uh, I want to talk about hope, and especially in this time, that we, we find ourselves in where there's so many messages of, uh, that, that come against hope. Messages that, that are about fear and, and uh, all things that, that would point us away from God and away from hoping in Him. And the message of hope is universal. It, it transcends time. It transcends every situation and every nation. So I want you to, to hear what, what the Lord has put in my heart and as we go through this, think of uh, what we typically think of as hope and how the Bible describes it. So, in the original description of hope, uh, it would be, uh, it's, it's a description of a confident expectation. So, we'll read this later on, but in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it shows us that hope is actually the blueprint for faith. Hope is the, the form or, or the plan that, that faith goes by. When people have talked about hope, they've actually tended to think of it more in the same idea as wishful thinking. And that's not what the Bible's talking about when it, when it talks about hope. It's talked about specifically by name in, in over 50 verses. Uh, but if we're willing to see it, there are many more verses that, that have clear teachings about it, even though the word hope itself may not have been used in that verse. So I want to start out in uh, Romans 4. I want to read uh, starting in verse 16. And it's where it says, uh, let's see, Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but to that also which is of faith which are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform. Therefore it was accounted to him as righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. You get that. This was not just for Abraham. This was also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised up because of our justification. So this is an amazing passage on hope. It really is a description of something that, that I, I wish uh, I would have understood long before. And, and yet the foundation of it is is so solid when we look at what abraham did we look at how he believed and how he really he hoped against hopes what verse 18 says so i want to talk about that what does it mean what that that abraham hoped against hope how can you use one action against itself but really what it is is it shows us that there are two different kinds of hope there's spiritual hope and there's natural hope so Abraham used spiritual hope against natural hope. God promised to him it, the, all of the blessings that we see in, in, uh, when God spoke to Abraham and made the covenant with him. These promises, Abraham could have believed them 
or he could have dismissed them. But the, the promise of God carried more authority than what Abraham could see in the natural. Now, I want to look at uh, Romans 15, 13, and this is actually the verse that really states the vision of Wingard Ministries. It's what God uh, put on my heart for the ministry. And it is, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, hope is of God. It comes to us through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. God's desire for us is that we abound in His confident expectation. I like to think of it this way. Uh, it's, it's actually, Charles Capps used to say this, uh, hope is the thermostat, faith is the substance or the power. If the heating unit on a building would have no thermostat, the entire building would freeze. It would have all the power necessary, everything in place, but no way to control it or to use it effectively. That really makes a lot of sense to me. Hope is also described as the anchor of the soul. This is really an inner image. It's an inner image that we can rely on. Uh, Hebrews 6 talks about this. I'd like to uh, look at at verse 18. Um, There is a very specific way this is worded. So Hebrews 6, 18 It says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This hope is an anchor of the soul. Natural hope is is built up through natural education. But that, that is hope without faith, and it will never produce anything. It remains still as wishful thinking. Natural hope has no, no constants to stand on. But Abraham considered not his body, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. He only considered that which was promised. He was fully persuaded. He saw himself as God had already declared him. This is is the result of being in God's word. His inner image, Abraham's inner image, was more real than what he could see in the natural. And understand, this this is... so that we can live this way as well. Not just so that Abraham could be justified, but so that we could be justified. Uh, Maybe I can describe the verses we just read in Hebrews 6 in this way. And this is talking about how Jesus is our great high priest and how our hope is tied to him. Uh, He is in me and I am in him. And when that inner image is developed on the inside of me, I don't have to try to go to the throne room physically. I don't have to try to struggle to get to the Holy of Holies. All I have to do is pronounce the name of Jesus. And that inner image of what my needs are is instantly inside the Holy of Holies of God. There there hangs an image of what I need right over the heavenly mercy seat. That's the answer to my need. And it's brought forth not on me, but through the Spirit of God in me. So 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, Now abides these three, faith, hope, and love. Hope is built on the promises of God, always seeing it happening now. So let's, let's uh, go to Hebrews 11, 1. Uh, that's something that's a pretty familiar verse. Uh, I just like how it starts. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the writer does not say that sometime in the future, faith. He says, now faith. It's for now. It's not for later. This understanding of faith for right now is one area that I'll be developing and digging into later on. But for now, let's just continue talking about hope because hope comes before faith. Hope is the substance of things 
or faith, sorry, is the substance of things first hoped for. So there's no such thing as no hope in the spirit. You either have hope or you have fear. If you have fear, it's simply having faith in the wrong thing. Put your hope in the promises of God and the fear will disappear. We've already read Hebrews 6.18 and, and it says that we are to lay hold of the hope set before us. This, this is our first act of faith. We need, to, we need to take it on purpose. We can't just say, well, I guess whenever it happens. The, the verses uh, right after that, 19 and 20, say that this hope we have, it says this hope we have is both sure and steadfast. So it, it works every time. If it, if, it's, if it doesn't manifest in the natural, then we're probably only dealing with natural hope. Because natural hope does not produce anything in the natural. It's wishful thinking. And we need to look very closely at whether we are wishing something would happen, or in other words, hoping it happens sometime in the future, or if we have a, a confident expectation that God's promises are true for us, right here, right now. Our spiritual hope enters into that within the veil, where Jesus went as our forerunner. So our hope goes in with Jesus as our high priest forever. So how much of what we think we have been hoping for is actually built on what, we can, what, what can be seen in the natural? What, what does it mean to, to learn how to lay hold? This means that we, we reach out and take it. We, we need to make the effort to read God's Word and allow supernatural hope to grow within us. This, this supernatural hope will then drive out every image of our defeat. It derives it out from our mind. It, it casts out fear. Um, it actually plants itself firmly in our hearts. So we started out by reading Romans 4, and this is, this is how Abraham is described. I want to go back and just, just refresh you again. He hoped against hope. He considered not his own body, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was fully persuaded that what God had said, he was able to perform it, or God was able to perform it. He spoke of things that are not as though they were. So why is it so hard to continue speaking, speaking of things that are not as though they were? It's using supernatural hope to work against natural hope. When you can learn to operate in supernatural hope and speak God's word to your mind and to your spirit and to your body, it will begin to develop an inner image of your success instead of your failure. The inner image of success will, will produce faith born out of hearing the word of God and that faith will begin to produce results in the natural coming through your own heart. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Watching shows on TV or on your phone or... <laughs> Simply watching the news, it, it, it will fight against that image of your success. It begins to choke off the hope, which that is your initial doorway to faith. Media has been specifically designed to give you fear and despair instead of hope and faith. So how much of the input that you're, you're giving to your soul is actually allowing hope and faith to be planted and to grow in your heart? We all want to have the faith of Abraham, of course, but are we willing to put in the time to allow the confident expectation to be formed in us? Until we have that unshakable hope, we simply need to focus on God's promises continually. You have a choice to make. James 1, uh, verse 6. Let me look at that. James 1, 6. It says, actually verses 6 through 8, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Hmm. Okay. So that doesn't sound like a very confident expectation. 
Most people are not completely honest about every area of their heart. It wasn't until I became willing to clearly address the gray areas in my heart that God was able to finally make some lasting changes in my daily experience. Be honest. If you don't yet have that true hope or confident expectation, grasp a hold of the Word of God. Find a promise you can stand on. It doesn't even matter if you, if you only have hope in one small thing. Just begin. Begin to think and go to one thing that you can find hope in, truly a confident expectation. Be willing to start small until that one thing is seen in the natural. When that happens, you can ask God to build your hope in another area. As you do this and continue filling your mind and your heart with the promises of God, you'll find that your faith and hope will take root and will begin to grow and produce more. So I want to read what Abraham did after his faith and hope had grown and matured over many years. I want to look at uh, Hebrews 11, and that is verse 17. So, Hebrews 11:17. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which also he received him in a figurative sense. Or, the King James says, he received him in a figure. So that figure was an image on the inside. It was more real in his mind than the natural reality right in front of him. Raising some, someone from the dead was a totally new concept in that culture and time. Abraham had nothing to hold on to or to hope in in the natural, but still he had a confident expectation. Abraham had to believe what God said without any record of God doing something like that on the earth. Verse 19 actually describes the image that Abraham had on the inside. He fully intended to kill his son as God had commanded, and he was planning to stand there and watch as God raised him back up to life. This was not a struggle for Abraham. He believed. He truly believed. These verses start out, by faith, Abraham. So, we need to understand that he made many mistakes over the years of getting to the place of full faith and assurance. Give yourself grace. Allow the promises of God to take root in your own heart. Focus on Jesus and allow that image of being one with Him to grow in your heart. You need to take time and read all of John 15 for yourself. But I'd like to, I'd like to read John 15, 7. Um, and it is, it, it's one verse out of the middle, uh, but make sure you take the time, sit with the Lord, read John 15. But just look at verse 7. Jesus said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. There's no question. He doesn't, he doesn't put any qualifications on you, on, on his word. He says, when you ask, it will be done. Instead of looking at your own experience and saying, well, that, that's not what happened to me. Instead of allowing your experience to define what the Word says and what you believe about it, believe the Word by itself. Believe it over top of your natural experience. And you will begin to see that when you ask, according to this hope, according to this faith, it will happen for you. God wants desperately for His children to receive His Word. And the purpose of His Word is to give His children hope. Too many times the Word of God seems so amazing, but impossible, that people end up thinking that it's only, it's only promising God's goodness to someone else. I've, I've even had Christians warn me about getting others' hopes up too high. Don't, you don't want to get people's hopes up. But the only thing the Bible warns us about is thinking too small or holding back in fear. God wants to give us a word, but then he expects us to believe it. 
God's ability to work in our lives is limited to what we are willing to believe and receive. So this is my encouragement to you today. Allow the hope of God, allow the confident expectation to grow in your heart. Ask Him for a specific word. Stand on that word and you will see it manifest in your life. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you.